Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. Next, I want to talk about the auxiliary verb do. Do has uh, a particular function in uh, English grammar. You don't find verbs like do in every language. Um, do, when it functions as an auxiliary, seems to have no real meaning. So unlike have and be and the modals, which all are associated with particular meanings, do seems only to be there just for grammatical information. It's sometimes called a dummy verb because it's, it doesn't actually have any meaningful content. But let's talk about the context in which it appears. Um, it shows up when you have subject to ox inversion, but you don't have an auxiliary. So normally when you have an auxiliary, you have a pair like the first pair of sentences. You have eaten the apples, have you eaten the apples? The question form and the subject invert with one another. But when you have no auxiliary, you don't get verbal inversion, right? You don't get um, ate you the apples, although that is the normal form in languages like French and Spanish. And we'll come back to that when we do head movement. But you do get did you eat the apples. So you get a do when you don't have an auxil another auxiliary. It also shows up in other contexts. It shows up when um, it's an emphatic uh, situation. You can say, you did eat the apples. So that's a do there that's um, for emphasis, but doesn't really add to the tense or aspect meaning of the sentence. And it also shows up when you have the negative not. So the negative uh, of I eat apples is I do not eat apples. So you have to put the do in here. Do support is a phenomenon where you stick a do in uh, in particular contexts where you would normally have just a main verb. So to summarize um, the distribution of do support, um, it shows up with yes-no questions when there's no other auxiliary, it shows up in emphatic constructions, and it shows up with negatives when there's no other auxiliary. Um, we're going to account for the second two cases, emphatics and negatives here, and we'll return to the issue of yes-no questions when we do head movement. The emphatic do um, has the requirement in its theta grid that it takes a plus v element that we talked about in the previous video, and it requires that the following form be bare, so it can't take any kind of inflection. For example, it can't take an ed suffix or an s suffix. It has to have um, a bare form that follows. Um, this is pretty straightforward. If you have emphasis, you just use this particular auxiliary. The negative form is a little more complicated. What we want with the negative form of do is that it always takes a neg p. You haven't seen neg p before, but essentially not has its own x bar structure. So not has this little neg p on top of it. Do neg takes neg p as its complement. And then neg p takes a plus v form, here in this case a verb phrase, and that verb form must be bare as well, just like the previous example. So this is what you do when you have a negative, is um, you are going to use this particular form. Now the reason why you have to use do when you have a negative is that zero past and zero present that we talked about in the previous video don't select for negation, right? So zero past and zero present select for a plus V category. But neg P is not a plus V category. So you cannot have a negation after these null forms. Instead, you're only going to get, be able to put negation in if you use do neg, because do neg selects for neg p, and then neg selects for the verb phrase. This is a trick to ensure that do always happens with negation. 
um, because negation can't show up with those other tense T notes. Um, think carefully about what the theta grid for a dig neg might look like. I'll give you a hint. It looks just like this one. All right, so we will return to the issue of do support in questions in the next unit.